Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Rules of Engagement, the 2013 edition of it. We made a few changes to this show. One thing we're going to keep doing is some great analysis for you guys. The show's going to evolve over the year, but the basic idea is going to remain the same. Of course, remember, send me any feedback you have. Tweet at me, at ISAXLAB. And, of course, tweet me questions, again, at ISAXLAB, that I'll answer at the end of this show. Let's talk a little bit about what Rules of Engagement is all about. It's a tactical analysis uh, discussion show hosted by myself, and it's going to air Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Every day of the week, it's going to have a different, unique theme of the day. Every Monday, we're going to do Talking Tactics. That's a day where I look at professional games and go over the tactics they use and talk about how you can take those tactics and apply them to your game back at home. Every Tuesday, it's going to be developing fundamentals. That's where we're going to go over the basics of the game and try to instruct people on basically how the game plays, how to learn to be a better player, and how to understand what's going on when they watch the professional level plays. Every Wednesday, we're going to have Mechanics of the Bazaar. This is where we take a look at, at some like crazy games that pro gamers do, why they did that outlandish strategy in that game, why it may have worked there, and why maybe we don't see that strategy at all the time at the pro level. Every Thursday is going to be Community Critique. Uh, on Thursdays, we're going to do the same thing that we do on Mondays, analyze gameplay, but instead of professional games, it's going to be the chance where you guys at home can send me your replays, and I'll take a look at those every Thursday. You can submit your replays to MajorLeagueGaming.com slash replays. Of course, every Friday is going to be the last day of the week. That's where it's going to be a moment of self-reflection. I'm going to take a look at some of my own gameplay and take a look what went wrong and what I could have done better. Really, some things I did good that were pretty easy to replicate that can improve the gameplay of, of yourselves back at home. So without further ado, let's talk about what we're going to go over today's episode, Talking Tactics. We're going to start off with looking at Mutilus play in Zerg vs. Protoss, taking a look at Roro vs. Oz. Next, we're going to talk about uh, how the best defense is often a good offense, taking a look at Last versus Puma, or excuse me, taking a look at Stork versus Puma. Then we're going to talk about um, how, or sorry, Last versus Puma <laughs> was correct. Taking a look at Perseverance is our last section. That's going to be Stork versus Puma. And then we're going to get on to the question and answer period at the end of the show. Let's just jump straight into how to use Mutilus and Zerg versus Protoss, taking a look at Roro versus Oz. There's three main ideas on how to use Mutilus versus Protoss. The first idea is going to be you want to use Mutilus to kill sentries. The second idea is you want to spread the Protoss out. And the third idea is you want to attack the weakest spot that the Protoss has. So we're going to start this out with the first idea. We're going to jump into the game of killing the sentries. Right here in this game, what we have is we have Roro went, went, went for Mutilus play. The Protoss just won a defensive third base. You know, he has Blink Stalkers, Sentries, Immortal Zelts. A very, very standard game. The foods are very similar. Zerg's up by a tiny bit. Not too much. It, this is a game that you yourself, a Zerg player, if you're going Mewless and you haven't encountered a two-base timing, you'll likely find yourself in this type of position. So this is where you want to first kill the sentries. And the reason why is because Mewless are not cost-effective in direct engagements. And so what they do have is they have maneuverability. And you need to weaken the Protoss defense to create openings in which you can use the Mutilus, utilize that maneuverability. So let's get in the game here and, and see what he does. Uh, what he's going to do is, the reason why, first let's talk about actually before we're going to pause this, why he wants to kill the sentries. So the reason why you really need to kill the sentries is because if you make sure there's no force fields, that will greatly weaken the Protoss defense and allow you to use your Zergings and Banings later in the game much, much, much more effectively. So as we come in here, he's going to use the Zergings to tank the Protoss army. If you notice this, the Stalkers and Sentries are all going to be distracted shooting Zerglings. The Mutilus focus fire the Sentries and then run away. And he only loses, I think, two Mutilus total in order to kill all four of those Sentries. Because he uses the Zerglings to tank, the Zerglings are not nearly as important. Always use those to tank when you go in for that Sentry Stein. The next thing we're going to talk about is spreading out the Protoss. And so there's a couple ways to do that. It's one is you can attack multiple spots. We can see Roro, he's attacking natural, going for the probes, maybe getting one stock or two. But the idea here is, yes, he's doing some nice damage. The main idea, though, is most importantly to keep the Protoss aware that they have to have units in this section of the map. Another way to spread the Protoss out is by is not only just harassing them with your units, but also taking these corner expansions incentivizes the Protoss to harass you. 
And now this spreads the Protoss out again because they feel they have to do some damage, stop your economy, economy from getting so strong, so they're sending their own units to attack you at different locations of the map. This is an indirect way of spreading your opponent out. Uh, even though he, he ends up losing this hatchery, he trades it for a 6 out, which is a perfectly fine trade for him, as it was an extraneous hatchery anyway. Uh, so you want to spread your opponent out. Do that with harass. You can harass over here at the bottom right. You can harass here in natural, as we just saw. And of course, you can even jump into the main if your mutilists have an opportunity. And you can spread your opponent out by taking extra expansions that your opponent will feel obliged to harass themselves. Uh, so actually, let's just jump into the game and talk about, or let's jump into the map of, of the game and talk about a couple things that, uh, a couple of different angles where you can harass at and what we notice him doing. So we notice he had the Mutilus fleet attack over at the, uh, the natural expansion of the Protoss. So he has a bunch of Mutilus here and they can attack this way. The other thing he did well is he got that corner expansion up here. When this with this corner expansion, this makes the Protoss have to attack that area as well or they're going to fall behind economically. Then of course, he also had another squadron of units down here that could threaten a third this way. And he, of course, he had his main army roughly around this area and this could threaten either location. So if we're talking about this from the Protoss point of view, what the Protoss has to do is the Protoss has to defend all of a sudden a lot of different locations. So uh, the Protoss, he has to defend this location. And then again, he has to defend this location too. And he has to even attack this location. So he's got three different places where the Protoss wants to be, and this is going to spread his, his army out in three different ways. The idea of spreading the army out is all of a sudden at any given point, instead of 100% of the army being there, there's only going to be 33% or maybe 40% or some smaller chunk of the army that you can engage at a given point. And this is where we come to the third idea of using Mulis in Zerg vs Protoss, is where you attack the weakest spot. So now you spread your opponent out, then you find whichever spot is weakest, and you attack it. And people are saying, why would you feel like you have to attack if you're up base? Well, there's one thing that's very important in Mulis play versus Protoss. I'm just going to follow Ward's viewpoint for a bit. Uh, is that if, if you let the Protoss max out in an army, you're going to be in a bad position. And the reason why this is true is because Mutilists, uh, as I mentioned before, are not cost efficient in a straight on engagement. So if a Protoss gets a 200 food army, you could have a 200 food army too, but it's with Mutilists and you're probably going to lose the game in that engagement. That'll force you into going into a base trade situation. What you'd rather do is you'd rather engage your Protoss before they get a large army in Psionic Storm. And, and if you can't engage, if they never give you a good opportunity to go and engage, then base trade is your backup plan. But you never want to have to rely on a base trade if, if you can get away from uh, having that as your main plan, it can be a backup plan. So we see here more harass trying to make sure the Protoss is spread out. And then once he ensures that the Protoss is nice and spread out, he's going to identify a spot he wants to attack and focus his entire army on that one spot where the Protoss will not have their entire army to defend. So he's chosen it to be this third location of the Protoss. Now the Protoss has some of their army here, but if we look, there's all these units that are now having to hustle all the way over here, and they're not going to be in this battle. And of course, there was those zealots that were wasted at top left earlier. Those six zealots are dead. They're not going to be in the battle either, of course, because they're dead. Let's get back into the situation. And here, we're just going to run over to space. And the Protoss doesn't have their entire army there. They don't have the force fields to deny the Banings because he sniped the sentries earlier. This kills his Nexus, backs away. And from here on out, it's a very easy game for Zerg to win, being up. Uh, now he's up about 30 to 40 food, and the Protoss is only at two bases, and of course that creates an opening for the run to main, do more damage, and use that Mutilus maneuverability. It's kind of a three-punch strike. That's why we go over the, the, the three basic ideas of this again. The first idea is you want to kill the Sentries. Without Force Field, Zergans and Banians become much, much more useful. The second idea is then going to be to spread out the Protoss. And then the last idea is to attack the weakest spot. This is utilizing the fact that Mutilists are maneuverable so you can regroup and focus your entire army before the Protoss can regroup. The more you weaken their defenses by killing sentries, by killing photon cannons, by killing stalkers when you can, the harder it is for the Protoss to cover all the spots and the greater chance there is that there'll be some spot that's weak enough you can overrun. And then of course once you overrun one spot the game will, will kind of just steamroll forward and forward and forward and you can usually win from there on out. That's uh, playing from an advantage is something we'll talk about another day 
Today was how to get an advantage using Mutilus. That simple three-step process. Kill sentries, spread the Protoss out, and then attack the weakest spot, and you're going to end up ahead right where you want to be. So I hope you enjoyed this segment on how to play as Zerg against Protoss using Mutilus. We're going to take a quick break, then we're going to get on to a Terra Mirror play on how defense is often, often the best defense is often an offense. We'll be right back. <laughs> 